What's up? It's your boy Carcino here, and let's talk about it. This is what's been going on, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we all know that LeBron James brought this team together. He picked this team. So if this team fails, it's all on his shoulders. So make sure everybody in here hit the like button coming through the door. Let's make sure that's addressed and assessed right now. Hit that like button coming through the door. Now, to top everything off, let's get to the bigger gist of the problem. The bigger gist of the problem is this. Because it must be said, of course. The biggest issue <coughs> is the fact that you got to deal with all of the changing variables that's on the Lakers because they're under the media scrutiny. Because it seems like they're the only team everybody watches in the NBA. Like, it's a soap opera drama. So, every game is like magnified. Like, right now, Russell Westbrook can't even walk around Los Angeles. You know, it's that bad. He's, he's realizing how bad it is now when he, now that he's here. He gets to see, you know, the results of what Laker fans think when they don't get what they want. Now, you look at different type of situations that uh, other people are around or put themselves involved in. And you look at Rondo. Rondo came over and was supposed to follow LeBron's heat and was like, look, you're more of a player's coach now. Like, you're not going to get a lot of minutes. Um, you know, it's, you got to know your role. Once he starts seeing other players get injured, he realized this was the opportunity for him to go along and basically, you know, just go ahead and do the work and get everything out and move in that direction. Things don't normally work the way we plan. And such as this, this was another one of those plans. Because you see, what people don't realize is that Russell Westbrook and Rondo is like oil and vinegar. They don't mix. And those two, especially. Now, everyone can see um, Russ and Rondo are going to clash at some point. And Rondo is always like the motivator on the team. But he's also the voice of doom. He could be a negative person in the locker room. And what they did not tell you, on the plane, coming back from a game, Rondo said something, and Westbrook told him, get the F out of his face. And they ended up changing seats on the plane. Now, when you look at the situation and look at what the team was going through at that time, and you start looking at, you know, the performances of what he was actually doing out there, you start going, man, Rondo's barely even playing. And after that Detroit flight back home, he wasn't going to play anymore. That was obvious. Rondo, before that time, they, he was averaging about 20 minutes a game. And Throughout his 20 minutes a game, they really wasn't getting productivity. <laughs> Sorry about that. They 
they really weren't getting the productivity for his minutes. He was averaging about 20 minutes a game at one point, and they really weren't winning like that. They had lost four or five games, and Rondo was not even scoring 10 points or wasn't even scoring at all. And he was out there, and it was like, we're not really getting the productivity of him being on the on the court. And he's negative in the locker room. Like, he's just not, he's trying to fire people up in the way that he was fired up. Like, the way, he, you know, he takes that method everywhere he goes. He takes that, that, um. Kevin Garnett method of fire to inspire, you know, like, come on, we playing like we don't even want to win, you know, like, come on, you know, and when you telling people they got to go with Mo, and Russ told him, get the F out of his face, nigga, I know what I need to do. And that's the run of, what? Man, you don't know who you're talking to, and that's when they separated the guys. And on that flight back from Detroit, Rondo was sat down. He didn't play another game. They were trying to do a trade to get him out of there ASAP. Rondo had to go. And that's why he got traded. Rondo set from after they came back from Detroit. They won that game, matter of fact. Didn't matter. That was the game. <laughs> That's where it all blew up. Because after the Boston loss, and then they came back and they barely beat Detroit. His minutes had reduced after the Bucks game. But when, when they saw what was happening with him, and he was just like not happy, not playing as much, and being in that position where guys are just re you know revolving in. And LeBron wanted this change, you know. People don't realize it, but he didn't want the change. So they sat Rondo for like five games and. I think he made an appearance one more time because they needed him to play. So they let him play like eight minutes in a game or whatever. He, once again, the productivity was like really low. So it was just like, we're not getting anything from Rondo at this point. You know. We can live without Rondo scoring four or five points a game. And basically, you know, he used to get assists. Now he's barely getting those. So, it was more collectively a team thing. But, the, you know, the bark back from Russ on that plane... That that was enough. Because after that, they basically had it with Rondo. You know, they still love him like a brother. But you know how that goes. Can't have that in the locker room. Because he's going to bring the whole team down. Especially this super fragile team. Plus, Russ was already going through it. He's been going through it all season. Now it's probably at its worst because he knows he's in the slump. You know, so. But one thing about Russ is he going to fight. He going to contend. He going to battle to get better. He going to challenge himself. He gonna, he's going to push himself to be great. But this is what superstars look like when they're in the tail end of their careers. The game shows you where you are. The game shows you this is where you're at right now. It 
and you just either got to accept it or not. But this is where you are right now. So this is <laughs> this is Russ's new reality. You're going to have to come to terms and grips with that real quick. I was told that Fogel is talking about reducing Russ minutes and starting to play Stanley Johnson more minutes and Avery Bradley to try to give maybe Russ's playing too many minutes. If we reduce, you know, Russ minutes about maybe two, three minutes, maybe he can, you know, don't have to burn himself all the way out. But how much of it is LeBron's decision or Fogel's decisions? Because LeBron wanted this move. He said, I don't want DeMar DeRozan. I want Russell Westbrook. So... They got to live with it. So don't forget to hit the like button. Support your boy Carcino. And I'm out. God bless.